my name is Leslie Williams and I am in San Diego, California. And this particular audio video file is going to be made so you can understand some connecting dots in reference to a section of the Michigan uh, expedition that happened towards me in Michigan. Now, before I make the following statements, I want you to understand something concerning this pertinent statement because it's relevant. And if you go to Google and research it extensively, you know, the best thing for you to do, if you really care uh, to, if you have the time, and you care to research my statements, uh, you'll have to follow the directions in reference to the instructions I give you concerning how to research these expeditions so you can see the holistic picture, which will show you the truth. I make these videos to inform, to expose. Now, uh, if you went to Google and typed in how... Creating homelessness of a target is one of their main, main, main objectives in reference to the perpetrators that are involved in these crimes. Who perpetrate them, protect them, allow them, and aid in abed them, and aid in abed in the expeditions of them. And if you take the time, if you have the time, and then you take the time to research that fact that homelessness is deliberately and intentionally created towards at least 98% of all targets of organized stalking, which is also called gang stalking, then you'll clearly be able to see that homelessness is created. And it's created for multiple motivations and aspirations and objectives. And what I'm going to show you is something that um, I'm going to state to you different information so you can take the information and connect the dots. Hang on one second, please. I'm having my afternoon cigarette. And I apologize for smoking while I'm making this video. Hold on one second, please. Now, the reason why I'm making this video, this particular video, is to help you understand the truth. Because at the end of the day, criminals don't want you to know the truth. Not at all. They're criminals. Do you really honestly think that a rapist will admit that he raped somebody if he can deny it and get away with it? Yes, he will. Now, what I'm about to show you has some connecting dots, so you can take these dots and research them, and as a result, synthesize them, and then you'll be able to see the truth concerning the statements. This here is a remote neural monitoring file that I found on 3-14-2013. I've, I've noticed it before, and I even saved it in some previous email files. But I ran across it again at the law library and decided to print it out. And you can find it by typing this in. Okay. Typing in remote neural monitoring compiled by D. Fenny. Okay, and that's the website right there. And what this states in the remote neural monitoring file has a lot to do with Michigan. Okay, and the crimes that occurred towards me in Michigan. But before you read it, and before you listen to the following statements, I'm going to make one statement that you can build on. Okay, actually two. And they are as follows. Uh, uh, you can go to YouTube and type in U of M torture, and you'll witness me catching a gang stalker harassing me on video at U of M library, which was already being blogged about and, and, and tweeted about. And I had numerous email files concerning that factual reality before that video was, was, was taken on January 20, 2011. Then you'll see a video that's right below it that shows me going to campus safety to complain about that particular incident and how much campus safety cared. Now, what we got to understand here is that if you take a look at the third, one of the third or fourth videos, you'll see me taking a picture of an individual on a balcony who's in a wheelchair and me saying, I think, if I remember correctly, I'm saying, there you go. Oh, it's a very, very short video. I think it's only about five seconds long. That video was taken on the balcony of this place right here that's mentioned in the remote neural monitoring file concerning Robert C. Gunn, who's a Ph.D. in Ann Arbor, Michigan, who is an NSA clinical psychologist. On the second page of this PDF link, or this uh, document, Concerning Robert Gunn, talks about his wife. Now, I want you to listen to what it says. It says, Gunn and his wife, Lee, the co-chair of the Washtenaw County Commission, are involved in a local homeless shelter project. Gunn has conducted psychological interviews on numerous homeless people and then used the information in his subject experiments. This homeless shelter concerning Washtenaw County is in Ann Arbor, Michigan, called the Delonis Homeless Shelter. That's where that picture was taken by me of the individual in the wheelchair when I said, was taking a video picture of him, and I said, there you go, okay? It was taken on the balcony in that Delonis homeless shelter that I was steered to go to 
as a direct result of street theaters that occurred towards me by the Ann Arbor Police, which is in Washtenaw County. And it's the same exact homeless shelter that Robert Gunn and his wife, who was the co-chair of the Washtenaw County Commission, okay, are involved in a local homeless shelter, homeless shelter projects where Gunn was conducting psychological interviews on numerous homeless people, okay? The same exact homeless shelter because I researched it when I discovered it online, I think back in 2000, between 2009 and 2010, okay? When I first ran across this article. It was actually, it had to be after 2010 because I didn't discover remote neural monitoring until October 7th, 2010. Now, if you go to go to YouTube and type in uh, virtual prisons uh, gang stalking or virtual prison, it's a YouTube channel. Uh, you can go to YouTube and type in virtual prisons USA electronic harassment or gang stalking. It has to do with a doctor, okay, who worked for the who worked for the veterans or they wanted him to work for the veterans hospital in Ann Arbor, Michigan for mind control experiments. This individual who's making these videos, Virtual Prisons USA, is a doctor. He's Arabic. So he doesn't talk very well. But understand this and be clear, by no means dismiss what he has to say. Because he is talking about the same exact veterans hospital that is mentioned in this PDF link in reference to Dr. Gunn taking, it says it right there, Ann Arbor Veterans Hospital, okay? And he, this same individual who's making those videos talks about a Robert C. Gunn, okay? Now, my name is Leslie Williams, and you would not believe how I was gang stalked at that homeless shelter where they duped me to go to, and I left because I could see that I was being gang stalked while I was there, okay? So let me tell you something about human beings. Human beings know whether they can identify or name the tactics and methods that are being used against them are dangerous concerning their self-preservation. They can, they, can, they can deliberate it. They have any common sense uh, that, uh, that what's happening around them is, is, is at least unusual, okay? And out of the normalcy of normal human behavior, okay? Concerning environments, concerning experiences, and concerning about how experiences brought about the individual to be put in those environments people are used, the tactics and methods used to steer them there, and so on and so forth. And every single tactic and method that was used to steer me to go there directly related to the theft of over $500 worth of United States Postal Service money orders that I buried in Ann Arbor by myself. Now I want you to understand something. I think it was in 2009, I was on a bus in, in Michigan, and I decided to hide my license because I had been robbed about I was robbed sometime in that calendar year right across the street from U of M, okay? And I'll make a video about that eventually. And so I went through hell replacing my license. And I didn't want to be robbed of my identification again, which was being stolen by me and num uh, from me on numerous occasions like you would not believe. So what I decided to do was get off a bus that I was on as I was going by a wooded area that was on Ford Road in Michigan, in Dearborn, okay, and there's four-lane traffic's going going east and going west, going 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 west and then going east, and in the actual row between the four-lane traffic that went in each direction was a huge area where there was where there was multiple multiple trees. It looked like a miniature woods, you know, a section of property that that looked like woods, and I had eyeballed it on several occasions as a result of taking the same bus route going west and, go, and then coming back going east. And so what I thought to myself was I'm going to get off this bus right at the bus stop that's right across the street from that wooded area on Ford Road, run down into the wooded area, and then I even had a spoon that I had gotten from a, a, a thrift store, okay, where I was buying some of my clothes at at that time. Uh, in, on Ford Road just off of Middle Belt. And when I was there buying clothes, I went down the aisle that, sh that was dedicated to buying like uh, plates and cups and stuff like that, and I noticed a spoon. So what I did was I bought that spoon and then had a bottle of water with me with that spoon because I was starting to hide some of my property that had been stolen from me, like identifications, food stamp cards, money, like money orders. And I would take what I do, what I would do as I was preparing to hide certain things is I would take a bottle of water with me and the spoon, run to an area, put the water on the, on the dirt to soften it up and then take the spoon to dig a hole, okay? And then place whatever I wanted to place in the hole to bury it, 
okay? And that's what I do with my license when I got off the bus. I got off the bus, immediately crossed Ford Road into the wooded area, got inside of the wooded area about 20 feet, made a right about 15 feet, dropped to my knees, got out the water bottle, and uh, poured it on the dirt, and then used the spoon to dig a hole, took out my license, which was already in a plastic bag covered with a rubber band, and put the license down in the hole, covered, put the dirt back in the hole, and then covered it up with branches and leaves, and then left there immediately. And then within a week, I had to, uh, it was close to payday. So then around payday, I went to go get the license back out, because I had to be able to cast my checks that I was getting physically at, at that time in my P.O. box. When I went back to that wooded area to get my license, someone had dug it up, put the dirt back in the hole, and then positioned the license in a portrait-type position, kind of like how you would view a, a picture on a piano, how it's set up and prompted up so you can see the picture as you walk into the room. They had set, took the license out of the hole, put the dirt back in the hole, and then propped up the license to face towards me so when I came back to go get it, I could automatically see it. So, I thought to myself, how did they know I did this? At that time, I didn't know anything. I didn't know what was happening to me yet was gang stalking, and so I, and I had no idea about remote neural monitoring. So I figured somebody had just seen me get off the bus, and then possibly as a result, they communicated with somebody that was in a car, and then they came down and watched me bury it. Okay, and this is why I made the mistake of on a later date, okay, which was on around October 4th, 2008 or 9, 2009, I think it was. I got paid, and I went and I got some United States Postal Service money orders in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And then what I did was I took these money orders, put them and wrapped them up in a plastic bag, and then on my bike surveilled a huge area. I, I even zigzagged back and forth to try and see if I had a tail, anybody surveilling me. And there was some cars that I had seen on multiple streets as I was going through separate streets looking for a place to bury them. And so what I did was I finally found a place, hopped off my bike, and dug a hole between two houses, okay? And this was in the early morning hours, so people were at work. And so what I did was I hopped off my bike, walked between these two houses, poured the water on the dirt, put the uh, money orders that were in a plastic bag inside the hole, covered it back up, and left immediately. And then as I was leaving, I noticed a black guy that was walking up and down the street, and he was engaging in organized gang stalking, gaslighting uh, behaviors, physical gestures. But I didn't want to go back to the place to get, to get the money orders because then I would have to find another place and I wasn't sure if he had seen me. Then on October 13th, 2009, I went back to get him. I took a cab from Dearborn, Michigan to Ann Arbor and was going to pay the cab driver with money from the money orders once I went to the post office. Once I got him and then went to the post office to cash one of them, I was going to pay the actual taxi cab driver for the fare. They were gone. The police was called by me, and they didn't expect it, okay? So they pulled a huge organized gang stalking expedition as a result of that. And then as a result of me being broke because they stole the money orders, they steered me to that homeless shelter. And it's, the homeless shelter is even on the police report that was made because they actually had the audacity to give me a uh, warning report concerning trespassing. And then on that trespassing warning stated that they were directing me to go to that homeless shelter because I had no way now to eat. Yes. Um, and that's when they were also playing around with my food stamp card, so I would have no way to eat by myself to keep me independent from help, the help they were trying to steer me to for exploitation purposes. Cross-reference all the statements in this video, and you will be able to see that what I am telling you is undisputable proof. In this same PDF link that talks about Dr. Gunn, let me see if I can find it. Oh yeah, it's right here. It's right on the front page. It talks about how it's a four-part expedition and how gang stalking is directly connected to it. He says sometimes the gang stalking, which are nothing but paid operatives that are equipped with electronic eavesdropping devices, infrared detectors, x-ray viewers, and directed energy weapons, okay, are part of this expedition that he's responsible for, okay. I already proved that gang stalking was occurring towards me in Michigan and out here in San Diego in two separate calendar time period years. I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams. This is a tidbit file in reference to you being able to see that I'm a target of this crime, some of the maneuvers that happened towards me in Michigan, and what their motivations what their motivations and aspirations were for me. That YouTube video that's online that you can find by going to YouTube and typing in U of M Torture and just scan through the videos, you'll see me taking a video picture of a, of a, of a young man in a wheelchair. I was taking care of him while I was there, looking out for him. And uh, I said, there you go. 
in the video. That's on the balcony of the homeless shelter that this guy and his wife were attached to that's literally mentioned in this PDF link right here. Dr. Gunn and his wife Lee, who was a co-chair of the Washington County Commission, who worked for him or connected to the homeless shelter. Okay, and if you research Dr. Gunn, you will find out the name of the homeless shelter was the Delonis Homeless Shelter, the one that they steered me to go to. As a res That's why they stole my money, the money orders. Yeah, I'm in San Diego to, to steer me to that homeless shelter so I could eat. Yeah, do you see how they operated? I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams. They employed the same exact tactic in Dearborn with the license, digging it up and repositioning out for me to see to let me know that it was done. Yes, and then the, the theft of the money orders to steer me to the uh, to the uh, homeless shelter. You would not believe what I know. I'm in San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams. I expose the tr these truths so people can be aware of the truth for what it is. Thank you.